If you've ever slept on a heavenly bed in a Western hotel, you can thank Barry Sternlich for a good night's sleep. It was modeled after his own personal bed and helped grow Starwood Hotels, including the Western brand, to become one of the largest hotel chains in the world. Today, we'll explore another Sternlich business, Starwood Property Trust. Zero dividend cuts since inception in 2009 on what is a fairly generous yield. Let's see what's under the hood. The dividend history for Starwood Property Trust looks solid, but not really inspiring. There was a period of dividend growth, one special dividend, and then it's been flat for about 10 years. A quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. Since retiring in 2017, I became a lot more motivated to research my investments because they pay for everything. And when I find something interesting, I make a video. Starwood Property Trust is an Emory, which means they're required to pay out 90% of their income to shareholders. Their business is primarily lending money for real estate transactions, but not entirely. Starwood isn't like other MREITs. The typical way to assess an MREIT is to look at the real estate sector that they lend to. For example, Arbor Realty does loans on multifamily housing and then look at management's track record. Management is important because MREITs typically own few, if any, real estate assets. Their value is purely their ability to lend money at a good margin above their cost, and to do that through all economic cycles. To really understand Starwood Property Trust, you have to understand Barry Sternley. He's the chairman and the CEO, and he's quite a character, along the lines of the late, great Sam Zell. They both made billions out of real estate investment companies, they're both known for being outspoken, and they both diversified into so many businesses, it's mind-boggling. No surprise that they did billions of dollars of transactions with each other. There isn't time to tell Barry's full story, but creating and overseeing the $6 billion Starwood Property Trust would rank as one of his minor accomplishments. I'll just mention a few highlights of his career. In 1991, at age 31, after being laid off from his job, he convinced two wealthy families to invest $10 million each into a venture called Starwood Capital Group. Starwood Property Trust would come later. He used the money to buy distressed assets from the Resolution Trust Corporation, or RTC. This was a government entity formed to auction off distressed assets as a result of the savings and loan crisis. He focused on multifamily housing deals and quickly built a large portfolio on the cheap. Two years later, he swapped the entire multifamily housing portfolio for 20% of Sam Zell's equity residential REIT. Those shares went up in value and Barry was on his way to building an empire. Starwood Capital Group went on to become a massive global private investment firm with assets under management of $115 billion. It manages Starwood Property Trust and Barry is the chairman and CEO of both entities. Along the way, Barry also created Starwood Hotels and Resorts. They expanded through acquisition of brands including Western, Sheraton, and Le Meridian. They also created new hotel brands, including The W. Starwood Hotels went on to become one of the biggest hotel chains in the world and was sold to Marriott in 2016 for $12.2 billion. To say Barry has strong opinions would be an understatement. Here's a quote from the 2023 first quarter earnings call. You'll have RTC too. Clearly the government will have to step in and save all these banks who really are a victim of the Fed's own stupidity. He's an interesting personality because on the one hand, he's conservative about financial matters, but at the same time, his greatest passion is design, something the W Hotel is famous for. These are two things that don't usually go together. I was wondering if his house looks like one of his cool hotels and sure enough, casual luxury. Enough about Barry. Before we move on to the bull case regarding tax treatment, Emreads distribute mostly non-qualified dividends that are taxed as ordinary income, so no tax breaks. Apart from the yield, here's what I like about STWD. Starwood Property Trust is more diversified than the typical Emory. The commercial loans are spread across various sectors, nothing unusual there, but 11% of the assets are physical real estate with stable cash flows. For example, medical office buildings, affordable housing, and this makes Starwood slightly less risky than a 100% pure Emory. Another 11% is allocated to residential lending. These are targeted at individual investors building a portfolio of single family homes. An investor without a regular salary, maybe they own their own business, or purchasing more than four houses 
finds it very difficult to qualify for a loan to buy an investment property. Regular banks won't lend you money regardless of how well the house cash flows, but Starwood will, as long as you put down a 33% deposit. The investor can grow their portfolio without using all their cash, and Starwood's risk is low at a 67% loan-to-value ratio. The last diversification I want to highlight is infrastructure lending at 8% of the pie. In this case, infrastructure isn't bridges and roads, it's really energy infrastructure. For example, loans to build gas pipelines and processing plants. It accounted for about 80% of new loan funding in Q1 of 2023. According to the president, Jeff DeModica, it produces returns of almost 20%, that's with leverage, and they plan to continue focusing on it. A recession sounds bad for commercial lenders, but listen to this quote from Barry. We have 300 people that are foaming at the mouth, ready for what the market assumes will be a massive onslaught of defaults and restructurings required in the commercial real estate industry. So, who are these people foaming at the mouth? They're the employees of LNR Partners. In the movie Pulp Fiction, Harvey Keitel played the cleaner. When things got messy, he got paid handsomely for doing the work others won't. In that case, cleaning up a dead body. When commercial loans get messy, the borrower can't pay, so the lender can take the building back, but they don't really want the building. Lenders are far more comfortable managing loans rather than real estate and tenants. Enter the cleaner, LNR. They generate fees by modifying the loan terms, selling the property, or in some cases, they'll buy the property themselves if they can score a huge discount on it. Just like Mr. Wolf in Pulp Fiction, they're paid handsomely for doing the dirty work. By the way, Harvey Keitel played the cleaner in another movie, different name, but similar character. If you know that movie, put it in the comments. LNR was founded all the way back in 1969, and in 2013, Starwood Property bought them for $1 billion. They're the world's largest special servicer for commercial loans. Fast forward to today, as of Q1 2023, LNR has been named the special servicer on $107 billion in loans and it's actively working on $5 billion of that portfolio. The Starwood president was asked about the potential revenue for LNR, and this was his response. So when you're modeling it, you can take $107 billion, you pick the percentage of losses that you want on that, and that's what's going to add on to the $5 billion, and for sort of simple math, we tend to multiply that by 1.25% to 1.5% of that will become revenue at some point in the future a year to two years later. So we're really excited about 2024, later part of 24, and heading into 25. So the worse a recession gets, the more revenue LNR is likely to make. BlackRock funds like BST have the advantage of access to the mothership's enormous resources like market data, uh, relationships, and leads for new deals. Starwood Property enjoys similar benefits and a similar setup. It's managed by Starwood Capital, so it has access to the information for their $115 billion of assets under management for things like hotels, multifamily, home building, and land. We'll finish the bull case with a quick chart. These are the maturity dates for funds borrowed by Starwood. The bulk aren't due for another three to four years, so not too much pressure to refinance in 2023. Here are the risks and concerns I have about Starwood Property Trust. During Q1 2023, Starwood increased its current expected credit loss provision from 26 million to 43 million. That's a measure of troubled loans. During the earnings call, the CFO and the president addressed their plans to recover potential losses on those loans. So this highlights two things to keep an eye on going forward. Firstly, that CECL number, and secondly, how successful they are at recovering losses, for example, by liquidating the collateral. That's not a euphemism for killing somebody, it's just selling a building. The market doesn't like office loans at the moment. San Francisco office buildings are considered kryptonite. On this subject, the CFO was quite specific in the Q1 call. He said, we have no loan exposure in any asset class in San Francisco and only 1% of our loan books is in Manhattan. Those are two of the weakest office markets in the country. Starwood Property has reduced its U.S. office exposure down to 10% of its assets, but I think the market would prefer less. For some context, one of Starwood's competitors, Blackstone Mortgage Trust, has 25% exposure to the U.S. office sector. Historically, Starwood's total returns have kept up with the S&P 500, mostly because of its juicy dividend. The pandemic crash put an end to that. Starwood has lagged since 2020. It almost caught up in September 2022, 
but it's still behind. So this is a contrarian play. The market is a bit sour on Starwood currently, probably fearful of defaults. Historically, Starwood has traded well above its net asset value, peaking at over 1.75 times its NAV, extremely high. Now that it's down to 1 times NAV, you could argue that the pricing is attractive. The market says defaults will rise and hurt Starwood. Barry says they're ready for a recession. If you believe Barry, then a roughly 10% yield is not a bad deal. Before the pandemic, Starwood's yield was in the 7s and 8s. If you want to invest in Starwood, I think Barry has to weigh into your decision. Watch his interviews and read his comments on at least one earnings call. Lending is a fairly opaque sector. We can't do a deep dive on the actual individual loans, so your opinion of leadership is important. I don't agree with all of his strongly held opinions, but I'm impressed with what he's been able to build. The lack of dividend growth isn't ideal, but with a yield of 10%, it's not essential. I just started a tiny allocation of less than 1% and will probably max out at about 2%. I think a yield of 10% plus is okay for the risk. In summary, I'd say it's more of an interesting investment than a compelling investment. Before I go, I mostly make videos about investments I like, but I like some of them more than others. So if you want to find videos of my favorites, I made a playlist to save you time. That wraps it up for Starwood Property Trust. More armchair income coming soon. 